being born in 2003, I should have grown up in an era surrounded by young elementary level Twilight fans, being that the book was released in 2005 and the Twilight movie later on during an economic recession. I luckily wasn't, and instead grew up around better things like video games and collecting Pokemon cards. Twilight never really appeared anywhere in my life. At most, I'd hear it was no bundle from friends and saw the cover of the book for the first time when my brother got it from a white elephant gift exchange. But other than those few examples, Twilight never really existed for me. It was only now that I would really get to experience anything related to this lovey dovey vampire fest. All thanks to this lovely class. <laughs> but in all fairness, this did give me the chance to read the best article in the entire world. Three Reasons the Twilight Books Are the Fucking Worst by John Romanelio. So props to that. Okay, on a side note, apparently this man is a level 70 orc wizard. That lucky motherfucker. Anyways, being forced to read this book for the first time, thanks Teach, it surprised me. It actually wasn't that bad as others made it out to be. It still wasn't very good, but it wasn't complete garbage. Twilight, in my opinion, is a novel with a very basic story that is bogged down by wordy writing and unlikable characters. But every once in a while, it presents a unique, questionable, or even interesting plot point that keeps the story from being too bland. These moments, while not being too frequent, make Twilight tolerable enough to read. So, the plot of the book. It's simple. In summary, a depressed lassie named Bella moves to Forks, Washington and ends up meeting a vampire there named Edward. They fall in love with each other, but many people, such as Jacob Black, aren't too keen on it. Cue shenanigans relating to Edward and Bella working out their relationship and trying to keep Bella the opposite of dead. Honestly, that's really about it. Nothing too terribly in-depth. Just a Romeo and Juliet-like romance story. Now getting into the bad, being that this book is around 30% tolerable, 65% not good, and 5% I want to throw this rectangular object out a window. I'd say I have a lot of material to work with. Multiple times in this novel, descriptions, thoughts of characters, etc. are filled to the brim. Unnecessary text that makes reading the story time consuming to say the least. This wouldn't be bad if the text was interesting, but most of the time it feels like anime filler. Repetitive and unneeded. It ends up bogging down the experience as being so wordy it caused the book's pacing to be extremely slow which ends up boring readers, such as yours truly. Some examples are even seen in just the first chapter. One is Bella's description of her bedroom when she moves in with Charlie, which she explains how it's the west bedroom which faced the front yard and proceeds to overly describe how it contains a wooden floor, light blue walls, peak ceiling, yellow lace curtains around the window, and other unneeded info such as her desk now having a second-hand computer. Another example is Bella's own description of herself in the same chapter, saying that she has ivory skin, is slender, and has tangled damp hair, along with consistently talking down to herself by telling the reader how she doesn't have the necessary and eye coordination to play sports without humiliating herself says she herself looks unhealthy and that she thinks she has a pallid reflection. This kind of wordiness appears in so many other areas of this novel and it makes reading this feel like a big chore. Although some readers could like all of the extra detail, most of it just ends up feeling unwanted. Like, I did not want or need to know Bella's hand-eye coordination is complete trash or every single little detail in Bella's bedroom. It feels like padding in order to meet an obligatory word count. Now, speaking of Bella and her problems, she as well as Edward are very likable main characters in the slightest. In short, Bella is just the Webster dictionary definition of sad teenager, and Edward is currently watching you sleep as we speak. But let's get into a little bit more detail. Well, Bella's problem of being obnoxiously sad was already addressed. Being that she tends to talk down about herself quite a lot in the book. This makes Bella feel a bit one note as it feels like Bella's only personality traits are hating life and of course, Edward. You can even count Edward as a personality trait. But let's talk about our fellow Mr. Eduardo Squidwardo Cohen. While I find Bella unlikable due to how annoyingly big sad she is, I can see how a reader could relate to her if they feel the same way about themselves as Bella does. Edward, on the other pale hand, is a completely different story. 
This boy is unlikable because of how annoyingly obtuse he is. No one could ever relate to this man. Fuck him! He is so insensitive when it comes to Bella's privacy and always seems to be in control of the relationship like some sort of sexy puppet master. He easily became my least favorite character of this book. His obtuseness can especially be seen when Bella takes Edward to her house for the first time. Readers end up learning how almost every night Edward would break into Bella's house and watch her when she'd sleep. Edward just being able to do this so casually defies all logic and social standards. Like what makes him think it's completely okay to breach someone's privacy just to watch them sleep? It makes Edward seem less like a caring lover and more like an insensitive, obsessive, and creepy stalker with negative amounts of common sense. Edward's insensitivity is later seen when he's driving himself, Bella, Alice, and Emmett away from James. Instead of considering Bella's pleas to go see Charlie so he won't be worried, Edward only considers his own idea of just going very far away. Ignoring Bella completely and believing that there are no other options. Edward is only reluctantly egged on to listen and follow Bella's plan after consistent shouts, complaints, and suggestions from Bella, Alice, and Emmett. The fact he only went along reluctantly makes him feel like he wanted to control the situation and manipulate what happens to Bella in her life, completely inconsiderate of what Bella actually wants. This scene felt like Edward considered Bella more like an expensive item than a lover, and that just rubbed me in all the wrong ways. It makes me wonder how Bella was able to fall in love with this pale being at all. Bruh. Now despite all that, there is some good that is able to crawl from beneath the 100 ton acre that is the bad. This good I speak of would be from the few plot points that exist inside this novel that I would consider legitimately interesting. These plot points all being around the world building of the vampires. Humans are kind of lame. <laughs> the prime example of this would be when. Uh, wait. Uh, oh my god. Look, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce this. I'm just gonna call this motherfucker Carl. Croissant. The prime example of this would be Carl's backstory, which was apparently so cool that Meyer dedicated an entire chapter to it. I mean, I can't blame her. Dude's a super chad. From Edward, readers learn Carl's life story. How he tried to kill himself after becoming a vampire. How he resisted his urges to kill humans and learned he could live off animal blood. And his first encounter with Edward. Though I think his highest achievement is, starting from England, he was able to swim to France. Because fuck boats. This was honestly such an interesting chapter, learning about all of Carl's struggles and hardships. This is the best part of the book in my opinion. Twilight, for all its faults, was still able to wiggle its way into the depths that is pop culture. Reviews praised this book, as shown by the back cover. People did in fact read this. And they liked this! E. Beyond just the books being enjoyed by their targeted audience of teen girls and surprisingly middle-aged women, the movies would catapult this franchise into stardom. Pop culture loved these movies. Although I had zero interaction with real, legit Twilight media, I do remember the number of parodies made based on the films. The Mad Cartoon on Cartoon Network being a prime example, making stuff like Twy School Musical and Twilight Stalking Dawn. I didn't understand what the parodies were at the time, but I did find them enjoyable as neat Saturday morning cartoons. There was also that Edward vs. Jacob thing that happened, and I would always say Edward when asked about it because I had no clue what they were talking about. But I did know what an Edward the Blue Engine was, and that decided my choice. Poor Edward. Though amongst all the pop culture hubbub, I never really saw another important aspect of Twilight appear within the pop that being its religious implications. Like, Meyer put a quote from the Book of Genesis at the start of the novel. Like, that shit gots to be important. 
Meyer being a Mormon, I feel readers could get enjoyment from wondering what parts of the story Meyer could have added her religious beliefs into. Could the Cohen family be related in any way to Mormonism? What about Bella and her family? Honestly, I am definitely not the prime homo sapien to be talking about religion in any way, shape, or form, being that I am not especially religious myself. But I do think it's good food for thought if you actually want to read this. But going back to Twilight's pop culture standing, I feel it has definitely dropped off in recent years. My English teacher talked about how there was apparently some sort of Twilight renaissance and Edward basically being what most people think of when the word vampire decides to schmoove into their brains. And I mean, sure, that could be the case for some people, but with so many other popular vampires, I wouldn't say Edward is number one for most humans. Take Basic Bitch Dracula, for example. The bare minimum, and the first thing that pops up when I search vampire costume. He is the most common form of vampire media, and definitely ain't no teenager. Maybe you think of Dracula from Castlevania. The dude is essentially the main antagonist of the entire series, so he's also a big deal. What about good old Nosferatu as well? He may only be relevant because he appeared in some of the best episodes of Spongebob, but he still counts. Does Lupin the Third count as a vampire? I have no fucking clue. And of course, from a little show called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, is Dio Ama put a hole in Kakyorin Brando? I swear this man's popularity is unmatched. If anything, Dio Brando, and basic bitch Dracula, is probably what appears in most people's heads nowadays. Not silly little puny privacy destroying Edward. So what's my point? My point is I cannot understand how Twilight became such a grand phenomenon. The original book, although it had its nice moments, is mostly a wordy mess with unlikable main characters that just make me want to start slicing the book in half. Look at that nice little indent. The movie is even worse as it has all the bad of the book plus terrible special effects. That baseball scene, dear. Lord. But to be honest, my dislike and confusion from Twilight's fame is probably because I'm not the book's target audience. Admitting the target audience is the best thing a piece of media can do. A young teenage girl would definitely get more enjoyment from this instead of the dumbass college student that is me. Just like how I, a gamer, would get a lot more out of Steve's Smash reveal trailer that put Twitter in a coma than a non-gamer who would just want to know why Twitter isn't working. In the end, Twilight wasn't made for me and my unenjoyment of it is proof. That doesn't mean people outside of the targeted audience couldn't like this book, but I feel most would want to stay 20 meters away from it at all times. My classmates were definitely enough evidence for that. You know, I just realized I forgot to take off my glasses for some of the live action scenes. Well. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Twilight, and I want to pose a question onto you. What do you think of Twilight? Is it the magnum opus that deserves to be on the highest pedestal of literature? Or does it deserve to be washed, washed some more, thrown against many surfaces, and rinsed in the shower? Or do you think it's just a book? Let me know. Or don't. I don't really care in the end. I'm just happy I don't have to touch this damn book ever again. Starting... Now. Gosh, shit, that hurt.